right. you have the power thing? How, uh, the XL oh, there is in the green camera bag. It's in your camera bag in the front pouch with the cord. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a pleasure to you. The ceremony of the Kim Momentary. We ask us to take your time now, please find your seats. Please take this opportunity to place all electronic devices on the scene. This court is courtesy of standard protocol. We ask that those who are invited to the press to invite you to take pictures at any time and check the rules and things that are going on. The ceremony will begin shortly. Mr. Douglas Rose of the American Consulate Unit. Colonel retired John Halstead, former USAG Swineford Commander. And Colonel Anthony Hager, former USAG Swineford Commander. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a very special introduction and welcome to the members of the Ledworth and Pond families with us today. Joining us is Mr. Raymond Ledworth, Ms. Susan Ledworth Halchek, and Wendy Ledworth. From the Kahn family, we have Stephanie Kahn Quinn, the granddaughter of Lieutenant, First Lieutenant Orville B. Kahn. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in a round of applause for our honored guests. <laughs> On behalf of Kathleen Y. Marin, Installation Management Command Europe Region Director, Command Sergeant Major Romeo Montez III, Command Sergeant Major for Income Europe, and on behalf of your host today, Colonel Christopher M. Benson, Commander, United States Army Garrison Onslaught, and Command Sergeant Major Mark A. Kiefer, Command Sergeant Major of USAG Onslaught, welcome to the final retreat ceremony for the United States Army Garrison Swine Corps. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the national colors and remain standing for the invocation given by Chaplain Major Promoter Kent Walker, and the playing of the national anthems for the Federal Republic of Germany and the United States of America. Would you pray with me? God is the time and we're taking this time to reflect 
We reflect on your goodness as well. We remember the times you told us that you would not leave us nor forsake us, whether it be good times or bad. And God, we thank you for that. God, we ask that you bless our ceremony today as we reflect on the many years of great times and struggles that the great people of Swineford and the Army community have worked through together here. Today, we pray that you would bless this community with continued prosperity as we close this installation today and great ventures for them ahead. God, while this is a time of sadness as it closes this post, we will continue to enjoy the relationship that we made here for many years to come. And God, as we close, and we never forget our men and women that are hard for the day to continue to fight for freedom that we may be able to live in community and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we'd like to invite all former garrison and installation commanders to accompany Colonel Benson, Command Sergeant Major Keeper, as they symbolically face the colors of the garrison for the final time. This act will symbolize the end of the garrison's role in Schweinfurt. All former commanders are asked to join in this function as a symbolic gesture to recognize and illustrate that commanders are where the colors are.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and render proper courtesy as the color you throughout the parts. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce the Director for Installation Management Command, European Region, Ms. Kathleen Y. Merrill. Shrineford. 
According to a recent study, Schweinfurt is one of the fastest growing cities in Germany and is ranked as one of the most dynamic cities in Europe, which can clearly be seen by the city's proactive approach to planning new and exciting uses for the barracks. As we prepare to return U.S. facilities to the federal government, I would like to thank all of you who have remained good stewards of this extraordinary bond we share with our German neighbors and our shared heritage. Supporting the NATO alliance is not only a duty we all share, but a mission entrusted to us by our forefathers. A struggle for the very peace and security we must now safeguard. Although we are leaving Schweinfurt, Installation Management Command's commitment to our mission, our German neighbors, service members, families, and civilians, it remains. Our nation has asked its army to conserve resources during this challenging time in both of our country's histories, and we have accepted this challenge of garrisons across Europe, in Belgium, in Germany, the Netherlands, and in Italy. As part of this transition, service members and families and civil servants of many nationalities have been asked to fulfill the call of selfless service, the very essence of duty. It is also my duty to ensure income meets its obligations to our workforce, both German and American, as we make this transition. I value each INCOM team member, regardless of nationality, as a member of our circle, of our family. And while the INCOM family will be smaller in Germany, we have meticulously planned to minimize as much as we possibly could the impact on our service members, families, and our workforce. A great deal of that planning came directly from the outstanding staff of the U.S. Army Garrison Schweinfurt by remaining responsive to customer and employee needs and through inspired leadership. Inspirational leadership like that of Klaus Mauber, deputy to the garrison manager for U.S. Army Garrison Schweinfurt. He is the first host nation leader to assume a full-time garrison commander position. Selected by Colonel Benson to provide the rock-solid leadership and common-sense approach to operations needed during tumultuous times, Klaus succeeded all expectations. Along with the garrison manager, Brian Atkins, who has come all the way from Fort Coles to be here with us today, Klaus provided the right stewardship of resources, coaching, and mentoring of employees, and a positive energy that the garrison workforce wanted and needed. Klaus is but one of the multitude of host nation employees that raise their hands and step forward to meet the mission on a daily basis. Robin Fisher, the Director of Public Works, is an exemplary leader, and he's a man of character. Over a year ago, when faced with the enormous task of closing the garrison, he had an opportunity to retire early with full benefits and leave the job to his senior division chief. Instead, he allowed his two of his division chiefs to retire early, and he assumed their duties as part of his own in order to reward them for their service. That is what Army leaders do. First in, last out. Robin, thank you for your leadership and your service. You demonstrate that we will, what we all will miss most, inspired leadership and achievement from our most valued workforce. Joseph Clint, a supervisory supply specialist and the director of Family Morale, Welfare, and Recreation, with over 46 years of combined military and civilian service, Joe is one of our longest service, servicing remaining employees. Personally leading the charge every day with his dry wit, energy, and leadership, Joe managed all of the non-corporated farm property and land receipts for Von Schleifer and he assisted Bamberg with property disposers. Joe's attention to detail and focus on mission accomplishment ensured one of the hardest missions, which was property accountability, was performed to the best possible degree in the circumstances. His dedication to duty, quality performance, and leadership exemplified all of our employees and is an example for others to follow. The strength of our income family is made up of stories just like these. 
Despite the challenges of closing its community, the staff of the U.S. Army Garrison Shrine Corps accomplished their mission with grace, with dignity, with compassion. They made the difference in the lives of soldiers and families who made Shrine Corps their home away from home. And I would like to applaud the staff of the Garrison. Meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, gestatten Sie mir, dass ich mich zunächst außerhalb des Protokolls sozusagen an meine Schweinfurter Mitbürger wende. Heute ist ein großer historischer Tag für die Stadt Schweinfurt. Der Neukar, die vor knapp 70 Jahren als Gegner, Besatzer und auch Befreier kamen, verlassen uns heute als Verbündete und Freunde. Sie gestatten, dass Landrat Köpper und ich deswegen uns noch einmal an unsere amerikanische Gemeinde in englischer Sprache wenden. Sie können unsere beiden Reden aber in den ihnen ausgehändigten Programmen nachlesen. Miss Marin, Colonel Jensen, Mr. Atkins, Ladies and Gentlemen, even though politicians should make sparring use of the expression historic, today I have decided to make conscious use of this word on behalf of the city of Schweinfurt. Today is without doubt a historic moment. After almost 70 years, the last American soldiers and their families are leaving this location. At its peak, the American community here numbered some 12,000 people and therefore accounted for a major part of the population of both the city and district of Schweinfurt. Their withdrawal isn't just leaving behind 300 hectares of build-up areas in the city and the district. It also marks an end of an era in the post-war history of Schweinfurt. On a day like today, we are unable to forget the, the original reason for such a major presence was the Second World War and the declaration of war by the German Reich on the United States of America in 1941. It was on April 11, 1945, 
and the first American soldiers occupied Schweinfurt after prevailing in the final engagement to the German army. The famous 42nd U.S. Infantry Division, also known as the Rainbow Division, marched into Schweinfurt, accompanied by the 12th U.S. Tank Division. So ended over five years of war for the people of Schweinfurt. A huge sense of relief felt by the people of Schweinfurt quickly turned to a sense of uncertainty, however. How would the Americans treat the Germans? What kind of reprisals could they expect? How long would they stay? The initial measures, such as the curfew for the civilian population and the non and the non fraternization rule of the American armed forces, forces seemed to promise hard times. Yet Trust building and essential relief measures such as the distribution of care packages quickly led to an easing of what had initially been a tense situation. It also quickly became clear that the Americans did not simply see themselves as being an occupying force and that they were also keen on spreading a sense of democracy to Germany the opening of the American house, for example. And the American way of life also became part of life in our towns and villages, which we which were at the time very provincial places. The current exhibition in the glass hall of the conference center that covers the Schweinfurt era with the jazz, rock and roll, and the first milk bar on the Rossmarkt provides a clear summary of the developments at that time. The occupation officially ended in 1952, and the victors and occupying forces increasingly became allies and then friends. Over the following decades, the reasons for the presence of American armed forces changed no longer were they there to keep the Germans under control, but to protect them and the rest of Western Europe from the retreat posed by the Warsaw Pact. More than you and contemporaries now seem unaware of the retreat posed at that time by the Soviet Union, their allies, and the communist outlook. The region around Fulda, known as the Fulda Gap, served as a gateway to Central and Western Europe, for that, in the event of an attack, Schweinfurt would rapidly have been at the forefront of the military action. This threat seemed to have disintegrated with the collapse of the Soviet Union and the fall of the Iron Curtain, in 1989. Yet, the current military conflicts in Crimea and the Ukraine have suddenly reawakened negative associations. Since 1945, here in Central and Western Europe, we have enjoyed the longest period of peace in this European history. And in, in economic terms, over the course of German history, the great majority of the German people have never been so well placed as we are today. For both of these positive developments, we owe our American friends a great deal of thanks. Our liberation from the chains of national socialism, the economic aid we receive for our redevelopment from the Marshall Plan and the defense of Western values due to the military alliance in NATO are cornerstones in the history of modern Germany and Schwein. All that remains for me to say today is thank you and farewell on behalf of the city of Frankfurt and its citizens. Thank you.
of the decades of successful and warm cooperation. Thank you for the many relationships and friendships we have enjoyed with you, which I myself have been privileged to have and which will outlast the withdrawal. Thank you for the cosmopolitan values and the ability to think outside of the box that the presence of our American allies have enabled us to gain. We are bidding farewell to our American friends and the certainty that we will keep honorating memories of this chapter in our history and that we will strive to maintain our friendships with the conviction that upholding and defending Western values is all the more important both now and in the future, especially in light of the current situation in the Ukraine, Syria and Iraq. Please allow me to finish by once again saying thank you for everything and may God bless you and your families. Ladies and gentlemen, the Swanford County Commissioner, Herr Florian Popper. Although this is true, we must also remember that our American allies also had 
the major presence in the surrounding region, occupying sites in the districts of Geldersheim, Niederwern, Dittelbrunn and Dittelhausen. In addition to our convoys, the Dreunhof is another installation that was taken over by the US troops in 1915 to be used as a training facility with a, with a shooting range. Ladies and gentlemen, the year 1954 saw the construction of the Heerichstraße, which was only open to military vehicles. Although, as a citizen of the Bedouin, I know that this ruin was frequently brought, and not only by people from the Bedouin, and which linked the training facility of Rome to the network travels. Ladies and gentlemen, it is certainly the case that most of the people in our region have their own personal associations with our American friends. Whether it was the German American Volkswagen, which is long since a thing of the past, the US soldiers enjoying the nightlife in Schweinfurt, or the harsh singing and chanting of the soldiers during their training sessions in the Bergstraße, and which often provided some great background music to the morning shade as the bathroom window was open and the wind was blowing the right direction. Since February the 2nd, 2012, we have all been getting used to the fact that this will be coming to a certain end. Today, we still another part in the rounds of the farewell ceremonies, which falls on once again to highlight how much of an impact the withdrawal of the military will have in our region. Here are just some of the figures that demonstrate the changes we will be reckoned. The military withdrawal will see around 11,000 people leaving the Schweinfurt region. At the beginning of the withdrawal, the garrison numbered 4,758 US soldiers, 149 civilian personnel, 478 German personnel, 6,185 family members, and, not to forget, 93 veterans. In the Schweinfurt region, the withdrawal of the US troops will see over 2,900 hectares of land and over 450 buildings with useful space of approximately 530,000 square meters being vacated by 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, the hardest part, however, will be saying goodbye to the many people we have grown to love, the lifestyle we have come to appreciate, and the celebrations that we that have shaped and enriched our lives in the shrine of region for nearly 17 years. And I once again emphasize that our personal connections are wide ranging. German American marriages, friendships and, in particular, the many German civilian employees who work and work for the US Army. We wish to express our warmest thanks for the generous actions of our American friends. This spring, together with the district's, con district's construction department, we have soldiers brought the Hundred House Forest Play area in the Schweigerwald into shape. And in early July, soldiers set to work showing and lending their support to the district construction department and the forest management team. Corrections such as these and for the many more gestures of understanding and support, I wish once again to express my warmest thanks on behalf of the District of Schweinfurt. Ladies and gentlemen, the special German-American friendship we have in our region has been strong and has endured regardless of the wider political situation. I sincerely wish and hope that our bonds of friendship will survive beyond the year of 2014 and remain in our hearts into the future. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the United States Army Garrison Onslaught, Colonel Christopher M. Benson. Thank you, Mr. Vice 
to those who have married former and current fellow companies of Jonas, and especially the Redwood and Kyle families. Mary's distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Mama, Mama, Mama and her. It's great to see so many people here, and I thank you for joining us on this special and historic occasion. On behalf of the U.S. Army Garrison Shrine Club, the soldiers, civilians, family members, employees, and retirees, I would like to thank the city, the Shrine Club, and the land trust, and the surrounding towns and villages for the nearly 70 years of partnership, friendship, memories, and memories with our American families. As I stated last week when the first war barracks in the garrison in Denver, it's been an honor for me to be associated with this great city and this installation and to serve as the last official commander of this U.S. Army Garrison in Frankfurt. We are honored to have so many distinguished guests in our audience today. I'd like to make a special welcome to the families of Lieutenant Colonel William Joe Edward and Lieutenant Corbett P. Khan, both of whom have killed so in our nation. The U.S. Army Garrison Schweinfurt was privileged to have Redwood Barracks and Con Barracks in London, their honor. We thank you so much for being here today and for your family sacrifice. I'd also like to take a minute to recognize Mr. Brian Atkins, the man who was really in charge for the last year or so after Colonel Rooney left. And he came back just for this occasion. And Rick Cross and Alec, friends. Deputy and the man who has continued to keep everything together. All of us are extremely fortunate to have this fantastic team leading this outstanding workforce through the difficult challenges of closing this installation while simultaneously providing superior support and assistance to our soldiers and their families. My job is easy thanks to you, so I thank you both for your tremendous judgment, compassion, and leadership. Of course, this is a team game, and without the outstanding teamwork and support of the garrison workforce, both American and German, sitting and standing among the audience today, the amazing accomplishments of this garrison and the efforts taken to get to this point today would not have been possible. This proud and dedicated workforce consistently performed well above their weight class because they love what they do and they love who they do it for and with. Earlier this afternoon, I was honored to help recognize many of them for their length of service. Some, like Norbert Hornell and Arthur Allen, have served for 30 years. And I can only imagine what proud Rita Frick, a former club manager, has seen in the memories she has of being a part of such a wonderful team over the past 44 years in one day. But whether they worked here for 44 years or six months, their efforts and contributions to the history and accomplishments of this installation are important, as is the dedicated service to our soldiers, families, and this community. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a good round of applause and thank them again for their years of commitment to our soldiers and this community. Would you pray with me? God has been come and we've taken this time to reflect. We reflect on your goodness as well. We remember the times you told us that you would not leave us nor forsake us, whether it be good times or bad. And God, we thank you for that. God, we ask that you bless our ceremony today as we reflect on the many years of great times and struggles that the great people of Swineford and the Army community have worked through together here. Today, we pray that you would bless this community with continued prosperity as we close with this installation today, and great venture for them ahead. God, while this is a time of sadness as we close this post, we will continue to work. From the Khan family, we have Stephanie Khan Quinn, the granddaughter of Lieutenant, First Lieutenant Orville B. Khan. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in a round of applause for our honored guests.
On behalf of Kathleen Y. Marin, Escalation Management Command Europe Region Director, Command Sergeant Major Romeo Montez III, Command Sergeant Major for Incom Europe, and on behalf of your host today, Colonel Christopher M. Benson, Commander of the United States Army Garrison Onslaught, and Command Sergeant Major Mark A. Kiefer, Command Sergeant Major of USAG Onslaught, welcome to the final retreat ceremony for the United States Army Garrison Swine Corps. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the National Colors and remain standing for the invocation given by Chaplain Major Promotable Kent Walker and the playing of the National Anthems for the Federal Republic of Germany and the United States of America. Right. Do you have the power thing? How, uh, the actual oh, thing is in the green camera bag. It's in your camera bag in the front pouch with the right. cord. Ladies and gentlemen, we have your pleasure, please. The ceremony will begin momentarily. We ask us to take your time now, please find your seats. Please take this opportunity to place all electronic devices on the scene. As a point of courtesy and standard protocol, we ask that those who are going to press to invite you to take pictures at any time and check the rules of the ceremony. The ceremony will begin shortly. Herr Manfred Betzel, representing the government of Lower Franconia. Schweinfurt yeah, yeah. County Commissioner, Herr Florian Tucker. His Honor Lord Mayor Sebastian Nernerlake from the city of Schweinfurt. Frau Gundlund Brieser, former Lord Mayor of Schweinfurt. Mr. Douglas Rose of the American Consulate of Munich. Colonel retired John Halstead, former USAG Schweinfurt commander. And Colonel Anthony Hager, former USAG Schweinfurt commander. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a very special introduction and welcome to the members of the Ledwork and Khan families with us today. Joining us are Mr. Raymond Ledwork, Ms. Susan Ledwork-Halchek, and Wendy Ledwork. 